Hello everyone. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. Uh, I'm with Chemistry. I'm a metaphysical minister. I know it's been a long time. Uh, light and love. I know it's been a long time since you guys heard from me. I haven't been on uh, YouTube for a minute. Uh, mainly because I post a lot of videos on Facebook. Uh, you can follow me there as well. I do a lot of videos there. A lot of live uh, videos there. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to get back to doing more videos here. Because I do a lot of sharing, excuse me, book reviews and other knowledge that the ancestors uh, may want to share with me. Uh, but I usually don't like to share uh, a lot of information that the ancestors share with me until I get confirmation. I pick uh, many things up uh, through meditation, just trying to... Uh, connect with that ancestral energy and trying to understand the imagery and the feelings uh, that they give us uh, about who we are as indigenous aboriginal people. So I do a lot of, I don't know what to call it. I don't know how I do that. I don't know what to call it. Um, it's just something I do in meditation. It's very important to me to connect, uh, to find out what's going on in my DNA uh, more about, because the more I do that, the more I'm going to find out uh, more about uh, my true self and who I really am. So that's why it's very important to uh, connect uh, with the ancestors and, and start exploring who you are. What is your makeup? What, what, what makes your being the way your being is? Why do you think the way you think? Um, and so that's important to me. When I am uh, going into meditation and trying to connect with my true self, my high power, uh, to understand all these spiritual gifts and, 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 and other uh, spiritual gifts we, we have on the inside of us that we need to access. So meditation is good um, for many, many things. It, it, it's, it's doing so many things as you go within. As you go within... Uh, you are, are doing so many things that's beneficial to you, to your how power. So meditation is very good, uh, whether you're doing it, uh, you know, just for health reasons or you're doing it just to focus. It has so many other benefits that comes with it. Um, but I wanted to talk about this book. I, it's two books. I always go back and reflect. Uh, you know, lately I I have been want to know more about uh, possession uh, because our ancestors were people that uh, they were mediums they were they were um, they were gifted mediums many of them were able to uh, go into the possessions and, and and this was an honor to be able to be uh, be mounted by a spirit that's what our ancestors call it mounted this was an honor because uh, in this possession the ancestors uh, used to bring back knowledge, you know, that would help the people. This is where prophecy really comes from. So, uh, possession is a part of prophecy. Uh, just like they have this Holy Spirit that possess people. It's the same thing, people. Okay? Uh, I wanted to know more about possession and why, you know, in this movie, what I noticed about, uh, I noticed about Hollywood and these horror movies is their frightful experience. They keep depicting the same experience over and over again. How white people are so afraid to be possessed. And you usually see them in the Christian or Catholic church or the Catholic uh, uh, has to come out and, uh, and do this uh, possession. Something that they, you know, dread doing, you know. So I was so uh, interested in that. And I asked the ancestors, I was like, what is their obsession with this possession? What is their, uh, uh, um, you know, their obsession with this frightening experience of demons? Uh, you know, uh, I wanted to know more about that. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I suggest you start uh, study, studying demonology and the occult. Okay, uh, what you think of are evil spirits or whatever, they're not what uh, they are portraying to be. And that's what that possession, that frightful possession is all about. You know, I just start asking ancestors. I was just like, so 
Why is possession is so important among you, among the indigenous cult culture? And it's so frightful by, uh, by the Caucasian culture. They are really frightened of possession. Uh, and, and, and another movie you can watch, what really, really got me to thinking is this uh, new series that got coming out called Exorcism. So that really got me to questioning. I don't, I'm not really scared of these horror movies anymore because I know what they're trying to do. You know, uh, I'm not, I, it doesn't really scare me anymore because, um, you know, I know what they're trying to do. This is all about playing with your psychology and trying to uh, reinforce these, you know, you know, th these superstitions because, you know, all this stuff they have made up because it's nothing the way they are portraying it. But I got to read this book right here because I wanted to know more about demonology. Uh, and um, it's called The Complete Book of Spells, Ceremonies, and Magic. So it's, it's really based on Wicca, Wicca culture. But like I've told you, if you watch, uh, watch any of my historical book reviews, you'll see that other cultures learn their spirituality and they're, they got a lot of their culture from indigenous cultures, aboriginal people, which are us, the original, you know, dark-skinned people. Uh, our ancestors was the original people. So a lot of them, uh, uh, you know, adopted their religion, modified, uh, modified our spiritual practices and created their religion. So that's the best way I can put that for you. They modified our spiritual practices, and that's how you get religion, okay? Because uh, uh, Africans, indigenous, aboriginal people, we have a variety of spiritual practices, okay? We, we don't have what you call, quote, unquote, we didn't have what you call, call unquote, quote, unquote, religion. We had spiritual practice. We were just people of nature that picked up these spiritual practices uh, that help us manifest and connect with the uh, nature around us, okay? So, that's the best way I can explain that. But uh, this big book, when I got to reading this book, uh, they could not talk about Wicca without talking about Voodoo, without talking about the Orishas, and without talking about possessions. What I noticed in this book, too, is that uh, it, 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 in, in this Isis, Diana worship, because it comes from Kenneth, okay? It comes from Arset, the first, first um, you know, uh, spiritual practices of this goes back to Kenneth. And probably even further than that when we look at the Orisha and the Voodoo, okay? Uh, they, they are a totally, uh, they, they're okay with, with practicing with that deity, but that makes sense. That's that makes sense because this, um, uh, in this religion, in Wicca religion, uh, it's all about too claiming your feminine femininity as well. But uh, they don't mind being possessed by this entity, by the feminine essence entity, which makes sense because that's really the first god of of all humanity. The first God was a woman. So you need to, I need a dick, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I did a, 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 a book review on that too. And you can see that in the symbol when I talk about that, okay? So that, that makes sense that, um, that this, you know, Wicca, uh, they do venerate the woman goddess, the goddess. They do have male deities in there, but uh, the, the real uh, big veneration is for the goddess in, in uh, Wicca. Okay, but they do have male gods in here as well. Okay, but the women, uh, they seem to venerate the goddess. This is all about invoking that uh, primordial energy because they're connected with the first mother as well. Okay, we all come from the first mother, which is an African woman, an uh, aboriginal. You know, if you don't like that term, African, you aboriginal, indigenous. It's still um, interchangeable with African. Okay, so, uh, yeah, they talk about that. And then when they talk about demonology in here, what, you know, I learned in here, uh, it was customary. This is customary for, uh, they talk about, they customary, that they, they, they call the latter spirits that they're taking control of, it's customary to label them as demons. 
and then they create their own spiritual deities. That's the way I understood it. I, I read that in this book. This is such an interesting book. I'm trying to find a part when they talks about uh, uh, demonology. And uh, let me find it in here. But demonology, you know, it's not what you expect. 186 and 187. It's not what you, what, what, what they are led on to tell you in the Christian church. That's why I tell people to study because we're really, a lot of us are spiritually ignorant. We don't, we're scared to study these things for ourselves. Okay. Uh, that possession thing always did something to me because I'm just like, you know, the light bulbs just start going off. And it, to me, it seemed like it was always, um, uh, Caucasian people in these movies, you know, the way they portray it, they're just like so scared of possession. But then when you read about African uh, spirituality, it's all about the possession. It's all about having the connection with this divine spirit and being able to uh, bring messages back, okay? So demonology can be defined as a branch of magic with malevolent spirits. In religious science, it has come to indicate knowledge regarding the supernatural beings who are not deities. Okay? They had explained that to you. These are spirits that are not deities. The Greek term daemon, from which the word demon evolved, originally meant genius or spirit. So they let you know demon is, demon mean, uh, you're, you're a genius. You know what I'm saying? You're a genius uh, uh, or a spirit. That's all that means. You see how they flipped that and turned that into bad and good? You know, uh, I've noticed that too when I start to read more about Obia and uh, learn more about um, the Simarok uh, culture or martial arts culture, how they use, uh, they use uh, you know, this sort of violence to protect themselves. When you start studying... Uh, warriors, the samurai, uh, the art of war, and things like that. There are uh, spirits like Ogun and Shango. These are spirits that are meant, you know, to help you protect yourself. These are protective spirits. So, uh, you know, so people like that, spirits like that, they probably would label as uh, demons. But actually, they're not demons. You know what I'm saying? They're not. They're not demons. They're just genius spirits. Who's learned the art, you know, the art of protection. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope I didn't lose you. <laughs> okay, so um, so we know now that, that uh, demons are just genius and spirits. See, it's good to study this stuff. I see a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that's, that's teaching a lot of fear-based stuff. I seen another brother, I don't know. He was up here talking about demons and all this. It is just energy in the universe, okay? That's all it is. It is energies and frequencies and vibrations in the universe. And the way of reaching these frequencies and energies is through mental thought. It is through mental thought. Once you start thinking about something, you know, that's just how mental energy works. The universe, those energies will become available to you, okay? No one can see the mind. You got energies... When you're thinking, you got energy in, in, in motion going on here. Okay, you might not be able to see, see it, but you got energy in motion when you begin to think. And when you begin to think, you begin to access, uh, access different molecules that will start uh, sharing the information with you. I'm speaking on a metaphysical level. Okay, this is how our learning and all that take process. Once you start thinking about math, you know, it just works that way. Once you start thinking about math, you can uh, better solve problems when you understand the formulation of it. Okay? So you start researching and working with math more. Okay? I hope I haven't lost you. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, this is really what this is about. Okay? It says, for some reason, England and the term took an entirely malignant connotation so that a demon is now seen as, seen as an extremely evil entity. According to Michael Pecellus, demons are divided into six major categories. 
fire, air, earth, water, subterranean, de subterranean depths, shadow sometimes goes. Okay? Uh, so you see that right there. They, they took that. So basically it's just like paranormal uh, activity. Basically. Okay? So be careful uh, with the term go. Uh, uh, with, with these uh, term demons. Uh, as I began to research in this book and start looking at the terms in here, uh, what they call uh, uh, demons, the names of the demons in here, I start looking at, I remember reading this book, uh, The Secret of Voodoo, and they, Voodoo have their own uh, customary ancestral occult knowledge that they follow here, which resemble Wicca very similarly. Okay, so uh, which didn't surprise me because uh, I know that you know all cultures learn from our ancestors. So it was very interesting to see that that these books kind of mirror uh, mirrored each other, even though one was based on African, you know, um, traditional African spiritual practices, and this was uh, totally based on. New Age. This is more New Age. When you look at Wicca, Wicca is going to do a New Age spin, okay? Because this is their ancestors' knowledge. Wicca belongs to, uh, it belongs to them, okay? They look at it like that. Even though Wicca only means wise one, and it comes, it really comes from our ancestors that taught them. Because they're still venerating and uh, recognizing uh, some of our ancestral deities, Okay? But the only difference is they hold on to Jesus, okay? Because you got to remember, they, they, they created Serapis, this deity. They created, I, you know, they created that. So they, they're going to hold on to Jesus, okay? So that's very important, too. Don't get caught up in their Jesus phenomenon. Because we already, if you've been following me, and uh, I've made that very clear, there is historically no real Jesus. Maybe among them, you know, but not... You know, when you got to do to the research on that, historically, there is no Jesus. That's the Constantine made, made up uh, individual. Okay? So, uh, this book, uh, it really opened my eyes to um, what was going on with this demon uh, possession thing. Um, there is no, uh, you know, there is no, no you know, it's fear-based, you know. I don't want, I, I'm telling you this because I don't want you to uh, stunt your spiritual growth by being afraid, okay? Uh, yes, it's good to keep yourself protected. There is, there is uh, not so good energy out there and there is good energy out there, okay? But once you, you, you understand uh, more about the spiritual realm, the more comfortable you will become working with it. You know, because we're we're bombarded, we're bombarded with the spiritual realm, the astral realm, the energy realm. It's all around us all the time. So that's why it's so easy for us to work with it because we're we're a part of it. We ignore it, you know what I'm saying? But as beings of energy, we're always sensing things through your emotions. Your emotions are nothing but energy sensors. That's all they are, and you're always sensing. We're sensing. We're picking up. We're looking. Uh, we're feeling uh, eternally and externally. You know what I'm saying? We're looking. And so, uh, I don't know if you can still see me. I got pop-ups going on here. Hold on, people. Okay, let me get this pop-up off. Now, so I got, you know, I, uh, you know, I study, you know, you have to study this, Okay. Uh, I don't want you to be afraid to study anything. Still got stuff going on, people. I don't know why. But, uh, I want you to study this. Uh, you know, I want you to study this stuff. You know, it's important that you study it and know what, um, uh, you know, know more about the spiritual realm because this is the age of knowing now there's no reason why you should be believing anything it's a science to your your spiritual evolution okay 
it's a science to your spiritual evolution. So the more you consciously uh, uh, search and, and learn things, your subconscious mind is, is able to give your conscious mind more access to this knowledge that, that's, that's already stored there. You're just refreshing it, bringing it to the conscious mind, okay? So you can understand it. Okay, so uh, this is a really good book. Uh, it do, You know, I, I say follow, I'm like Bobby Hammond. Uh, I like reading all of it because sometimes they, ha they, have, they have our ancestral knowledge. So it's very good to read these books uh, and, and try to see if, if it's some rituals. Because all through this book, they constantly talk about voodoo. They cannot talk about uh, their spiritual practice with talking about, without talking about indigenous culture. They just can't do it. They can't do it. That's the only way to explain what they're doing is by referring to ancestral spiritual practices or indigenous spiritual practice because that's where they started with us, okay? And these demons that they talk about, you see, they're nothing but elementals. Uh, it's I had another book, too. I wanted to talk about that. Uh, I had another book, and it was it was a, like a high magic book. I can't remember the name of it, of it you guys. I can't remember the name of it. But it kind of, it was the same color, and it had this same logo on it. Uh, but this is a different book. Maybe this is why I bought this book. But uh, I in that book, this this guy that works high magic uh, talked about these goetic spirits. Now that I remember about it, and they talk about the goetic spirits in here too. I'm not sure if they have pictures of the goetic spirits, but in that book, they had pictures of the goetic spirits. And most of the spirits in there remind you of the deities of Kemet, of, uh, let me go on, some of the African deities like the Orishas. Yeah, I was looking, at, now that I think back, but in the book they were labeled as goetic spirits. But we got to remember when our occult knowledge came into the hands of the colonialism, they changed everything. Because they had restricted mentality. They were trying to understand the type of uh, metaphysical beings we were coming in contact with. So quite naturally, they labeled them and used them for uh, their benefit, you know, in the way they saw fit. And that knowledge kind of got closed off from us. But, uh, yeah, I remember seeing that in that book. And he talked about, and I tried some of the things he was uh, telling people to do to shift their consciousness and uh i need to get that book back again i really do i'm gonna go online and look for that book because that book really worked uh he was telling you how to go in and shift uh the alternate realities within the room with the bell it took quite some time to do it it took me about a week to be able to shift the uh, alternate worlds but you can do it I, and it really scared me, but this was 15 years ago. This is when I first got into this knowledge, and I really was teaching myself. And I really didn't think I was going to be good at it, but it, after a week, uh, it really worked. It blew my mind away because it really worked. It, it worked, and it scared me, and I didn't try that again. But now that I, I'm no more, I want to explore that a little bit more. And he gives you simple ways how to shift these alternate realities and so when i begin to shift that alternate reality uh, the instructions is to turn off the light and ring the bell the bell is the, the sound helps you shift you know it helps you shift into the alternate reality sound is a frequency and also a portal music is a portal you know to the spiritual realm music and art are, are spiritual but I'm not going to talk about that right now. But anyway, sound helps you shift into that, that alternate universe. And so you turn off all the lights in the room. I mean, he says uh, he's very adamant about it being pitch black dark where you can see nothing. And with the eyes open, he says just see and sit. See and sit and uh, automatically the eyes will start to focus. Uh, but try to focus on things in the room. And that's just how our eyes is. That it tries to see even in darkness, even when we have our eyes open. 
and you will instantly start seeing these little dots these little dots and as you begin to see these dots uh, uh, they're orbs orbs I would say the orbs they become more and more clear the longer you sit in the room you will start seeing these faces uh, you have now entered into a, um, a alternate universe okay uh these spirits are aware of you and you are aware of them he says you do this for about a week before any of them will start to communicate with you you do this uh to get used to being in that alternate universe and traveling and you they're they're getting used to seeing you okay uh there there's also a spiritual protection safe word to stop uh these entities you know from uh having negative contact with you okay so i mean and, and and when i began i did that and i began to see these orbs it tripped me out when it happened because i was just like oh my god i'm actually doing this mind you not I, I was really young and i didn't really think it was gonna work but it worked and uh i was just oh my god i see these other entities in this room and i instantly jumped up and turned on the light and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened here. I just can't believe that. So I want to get that book back. So a lot of that knowledge, you know, they have in these, these books, uh, you know, check them out. You know, I'm not saying adopt everything. Adopt everything. You know, always use your discretion. Uh, you know, be careful when you're studying their stuff. But they have a lot of our information locked in these books. Okay. Uh, especially when you start going back doing the comparison. So like I said, there's no, uh, you know, there is no demon. Demon just means genius or spirit. You know, uh, I don't deal in fear-based things. You know, I don't think our ancestors, if our ancestors were so afraid of the spiritual realm, we wouldn't have the type of spiritual knowledge that we have today. Okay? I don't think it's anything to, to fear out there. Uh, you do want to cleanse yourself of negativity. Make sure you're saging or you had that uh, uh, Palo, Palo Santo. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. That, that spray, Florida water. Make sure you're protecting yourself. You got your crystals, you know. Uh, as long as you're doing that, I don't think you have to uh, be afraid of anything. As long as you're keeping yourself in high vibrations and, uh, you know, you're meditating the way you should be meditating. I don't think you should be afraid of anything. You know, that's just the way I look at it. Uh, I think a lot of these people that are, that are preaching about uh, or is teaching on demons, you need to know what that is before you start um, perpetrating fear. Because that's what got our people in the position that they are in now. Fear. Fear. Fear is keeping them back from knowing. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on now. So, you know, people, there is no... Uh, what you think is demons, you're going to have to change your thinking. And I know that's hard. That's, I know that's difficult, you know. Uh, and, 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 you know, start asking yourself questions. Let these things intrigue you. The things that fear you, start questioning them and researching them. Confront them, okay. Uh, you know, for years I was scared to study about demonology or what demons really was. And look, you know, uh... I got a chance, I just turned out that, that, that barrier. Uh, they even label some of these go ahead spirits as demons. But they're not demons because anybody can work with these go ahead spirits. And they say the same thing about the Orishas too. Uh, you know, Orishas, they'll work with anyone. They're not religious based. You know, that's, you know when I look at these angels, it's the same thing with these angels. Anyone will work, can work with angels because they're not religious based. It's, it's religious that, that is fear-based, okay? Uh, no one can really, if you, you're not a certain kind of way, you can't be uh, with a certain religion. Okay, so you, you see where I'm going with that? Uh, I hope, you know, the name of this book is uh, The Complete Books to Spell Ceremonies and Magic. is by Majin Gonzalez Whippler. I hope you can see that. I'm putting it close. That's the name of it. Uh, and then uh, this other book, which I think I did a book review on this. I'm not sure. But the name of this book is The Secrets of Voodoo by Milo Rigard. 
regard regard i think it's, that sounds french but this is a really uh really good book too uh i did both comparisons with these books uh you can see the similarities with especially when it comes to the le le lesser banishing ritual and uh cast in a circle uh some of the uh veves you know that you know that they there there's some similarities there as well so uh this is a really uh these are really good books to do a comparison if you want to know more about magic and ceremony so uh really good books so uh but thank you so much for watching i hope this helped you i hope this broke down you know you know took away some fear about your study your spiritual study uh Light and love, my ancestors be with you.